ম্যাডাম আরেকবার একটু রিপিট করলে ভালো হয় নো প্রবলেম নো প্রবলেম ওকে ইফ দা বেবি ইজ বর্ন টু দা মাদার হু ডেভেলপ চিকেন পক্স বিফোর 7 ডেজ আফটার ডেলিভারি অর আফটার 7 ডেজ ডেলিভারি ইন বোথ কন্ডিশন বেবি ডাজন্ট হ্যাভ এনি সাইন সিমটমস অফ চিকেন পক্স but we have to give varicella dusted immunoglobulin to the baby if mother rash develop before delivery seven is before delivery then we have to give the varicella dusted immunoglobulin immediately as soon as possible within 72 hours of life but if another condition when the mother uh, develop ra- uh, chicken pox rash such as five days after delivery. In these cases, baby have to be given the varicella gesture immunoglobulin within 10 days of birth. Now, am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Dr. Yasmin. Hello, Dr. Yasmin. Madam, immediate, immediate uh, immunoglobulin uh if mother uh, develop rash within se- before delivery before de- before delivery before delivery within seven mother days develop of- before seven days of of delivery before seven days of delivery and after seven days uh mother will give immediately immunoglobulin no uh, after seven days only mother after 10 days er modhe dibo tale এখন baby's brother younger brother or uh, baby's household face to face for 5 minutes in the same room for the 15 minutes cases of the chicken pox or disseminated shingles is infectious from 48 hours before the onset of rash until crusting in case of exposure then what to do now we have to follow this guideline Discussion pathway for non-maternal basilar gesture contact. Recently, we have discussed about the, what we have to do if the mother developed the rash, uh, either seven days before delivery or after seven days before delivery. But then now the picture is no, non-maternal contact. That is the his siblings develop chicken pox. Then what to do? Exposure of the then we have to look at the, if the gestational age is less than 28 weeks or less than 1 kg. Then we have to do the baby's varicella adjusted immunoglobulin assay. And if the baby varicella adjusted immunoglobulin is negative, then we have to give the baby varicella adjusted immunoglobulin. Do you get this point? Yes, madam. Booster Okay. Dr. Sophie, Dr. Firoz, do you get this point? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Dr. Firoz? Okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. And another condition, you know, the baby gestational age is more than 28 weeks or baby weight is more than 1 kg. Then, look at this picture. In this uh, right side, in this left side in this left side we do this if the baby is less than 28 weeks or less than uh, one kg then we do the baby's immunoglobulin test does we have see it baby's base registered immunoglobulin status if the baby is zero negative then we give the baby base registered immunoglobulin but if the baby is another condition is baby is more than 28 weeks or more than 1 kg 
here we give we take the history of previous maternal chicken pox yes i have developed chicken pox in two years back so no need to give any varicella zoster immunoglobulin to the baby but the mother is confused so urgent here we have to do the urgent maternal serology what is the test this is the varicella zoster ige level if this is um, the mother is sero positive she is varicella zoster igg positive so we have do not have to give any varicella zoster immunoglobulin to baby why because from the placenta this immunoglobulin level is already passes to the baby so it will protect the baby but if the mother is sero negative then varicella zoster immunoglobulin will tell this of exposure am i clear yes madam madam ekta question chilo no problem madam why we do all these things because the, the because of the gestational age only when why we do the maternal uh, uh, it must maybe it, it, it could be the same protocol but we we are maintaining the different protocol because the gestational age because the gestational age because this is very vulnerable less than 28 weeks less than 1 kg this is very much vulnerable we have do not have any taking any risks so we immediately do the vesicular gestation in the globulin is of this baby and if it is negative so immediately give the risk because this baby it is very vulnerable if one time develop the vesicular gestation infection it will be life threatening for this baby so we in take the immediate action and doing the baby's vesicular gestation immunoglobulin level but more than 28 weeks and baby is more than 1 kg so taking the history of the mother if the mother is uh, giving history this yes i have developed vesicular gestation 5 years back so we mm, do nothing but if mother is uncertain about this diagnosis then we do the test for mother it's about the female surety do you get the point dr yasmin yes ma'am okay dr sophie hello dr sophie dr sophie dr firoz do you get the point yes yes thank you okay another important and then finish okay another important is pulse oximetry and this is scenario is come in uh, foundation of practice exam it's very easy at the scenario pulse oximetry is screening apparently well newborn in postnatal nursery pre discharge pulse oximetry screening done within 4 to 48 hours right handed pre ductal right handed pre ductal situation and either foot post ductal situation is measured and the both reading is if it is uh, more than 94% or the difference of the pre ductal and the post ductal is less than 3% then the test is negative and discharge the baby but if the reading is between 90 to 40% and the difference is more than 2 then we have to clinical assessment and the repeat the test but if the reading is less than 90% the baby is symptomatic either one then the test is positive and and evaluation of this hypoxia and test positive urgent pediatric assessment is necessary these slides are important such so that the in the uh, exam uh, there may be scenario like that the on 5 uh, hours uh, pulse oximetry assessment we have found that the saturation is 89% then what to do 
look at this, then this reading is less than 90%. That means it is 89%. So the test is positive and urgent pediatric aspect is necessary. Okay. Do you get the point? Dr. Shundip? Dr. Shundip? Okay. Can you repeat uh, once more? Of course. Mm. Okay. Okay. First of all, uh, in case of pulse oximetry, universal screening. And this screening is done for the preductal and the postductal situation. How can we measure the preductal situation? By keeping the pulse oximetry in the right hand. And uh, post for postductal situation, we keep the pulse oximetry in either foot. First of all, the scenario and the, uh, uh, the time is four to 48 hours. And between this time, you find that the situation is more than 94%. And the difference of the preductal and the postductal is less than three. So the test is needed. The baby can be discharged. But the reading is, the first one is more than 94%. The second scenario, it is 90 to 94% or the difference is more than 2%, then we have to recheck it. But if the situation, no, this is less than 90% from the first reading, or the patient is symptomatic, what is the presentation of the symptomatic patient has respiratory distress, having gasping respiration, abnormal heart sound. So in this scenario, we have to do the pediatric assessment. Sponsored with pediatric doctor. Okay, gee, thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is another my handmade note. Upper limb injury. Okay, if we suspect any a case of uh, any injury in the upper limb, then we have to do the extra humerus or clavicle to exclude the fracture. If this, we find that this is a clavicle fracture, that reassurance is necessary and we review the baby at three weeks. If there is fracture in the humerus, then offer stepping of the arm, the chest. And the rest are not important for you. It is for the second part. For um, part one, fracture clavicle and the fracture humerus is important, especially the fracture clavicle. In case of fracture clavicle, nothing is necessary to do according to the guideline, only reassurance the parents and review the case at three weeks. In case of fracture humerus, stepping of the arm and the uh, BCHT follow up. This uh, two points is important here. Clavicle and the uh, humerus. Okay. Last topics of today's presentation, neonatal conjunctivitis. Here the important things is the day of presentation. In this um, exam, you have to look at which or uh, when this conjunctivitis present. If the presentation of this conjunctivitis within five days of birth, zero to five days, then the probable organism is Neisseria gonorrhea. But if the presentation is a five days to onwards, 10 days, seven days, five days to 14 days, then the organism is Chlamydia trichomatis. This is very important. So management, management is easy for Neisseria gonorrhea. Management is single dose cephotexin. And refer to ophthalmology. But in case of chlamydia, treat the azithromycin first IV dose and then topical azithromycin.
in this two lines are important. For Neisseria gonorrhea, give injection ceftriaxone, and for uh, chlamydia, give azithromycin single IV and followed by azithromycin eye drop. And where, where the ophthalmological review is necessary for Neisseria gonorrhea, ophthalmological review is necessary. This all about my previous lecture. <coughs> Any query from my presentation, please. Madam, we pulmonary persistent pulmonary hypertension. I'm sure I'm a me. Hello, good afternoon. Take to the problem. No problem. What is persistent pulmonary hypertension? Persistent pulmonary hypertension, it is the condition in the womb. The fetal has increased pulmonary hypertension and this time systemic blood vascular resistance is low. But following the birth, when the baby is crying, then the pulmonary pressure is formed. And after clamping the umbilical cord, the systemic vascular resistance is rising. It is the normal transition. But when the baby suffers from severe hypoxemia, hypothermia, acidosis, severe pain respect here, then the pressure, pulmonary pressure is not fall down. And it is called the persistent pulmonary hypertension. How the baby, how can we recognize it? We find the uh, having the low saturation after all the management, but the saturation is not increasing. And the patient having the risk factors such as the uh, acidosis, hypoxemia, hypothermia, or patient suffering from painful asphyxia or congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Okay, then a line of investigation. Here the investigation of choice is echocardiography. What is the findings of this echocardiography? There will be increased pulmonary vascular pressure. Okay? And another important finding is tricuspid regurgitation. Okay. What is the treatment option? Treatment option is very popular. Management of the underlying cause, giving infilled nitric oxide and serenopin. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Do you, Dr. Firoz, Dr. Shundip Bodo, do you have any query regarding to this presentation? Hello? Dr. Firoz? Yes. Yes. Do you have any query? No, no. No, I don't have any question. Thank you so much for a clear presentation. Thank you so much. Most welcome, Doctor Shundip Bodo. Madam. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah,